Hello and welcome back to Opera Vision's Next Generation series. I'm Nina Brazier, a stage director based in Frankfurt, and over this series we've been diving into four European Young Artist programmes, exploring how the opera world is developing and nurturing the next generation of talent. In this episode, we're looking at how activists and individuals are challenging the status quo, working towards sustainability in the face of the climate crisis. Opera does not have a reputation for being particularly green, with extensive international travel, sets and costumes created for individual productions, many of which are then disposed of. But during the pandemic and beyond, houses and individuals have continued to find ways to make spaces and performances more environmentally sustainable. Two such individuals are Sébastien Guez, the French tenor and activist responsible for publishing the Biopera essay, who now also works as a sustainability consultant for the French government, and Italian stage director Ilaria Lanzino, who has directed a pilot CO2-neutral production at Oper Leipzig. In this episode, we explore how artists may risk cuts to their income as they work to reduce their carbon impact. How being highly prepared yet flexible are essential for creating a sustainable production. And how those jet-setting selfies should be a thing of the past for the eco-savvy generation. But before we dive in, let's hear a few opening words from our guests. We shouldn't too much romanticize the process, I think sustainability is hard work. I think that an artist likes it more to talk about it, but when it is inside it, it's not easy always to get through it. I would be very careful with this new generation who is coming, like I call them the generation of Greta Thunberg, who are very sensitive right now about the future. Ilaria Lanzino joined me from her home in Cologne, where she's enjoying a well-deserved rest after three back-to-back productions. I'm not going to do it again, I have to say, but <laughs> it was also so much fun. And now I'm preparing the next productions and it feels great to rest and to prepare to read a lot, to watch many movies. It's one of my favourite periods uh, of the year. Now, you are one of a growing number of people who've been working towards sustainability in the opera world with your pilot production of Mary, Queen of Scots, the CO2 neutral production, which premiered last December at Oper Leipzig. Now, when you were taken on for the production, what were your earliest starting points for approaching the production in a new, more sustainable way? So the Opera Leipzig has indeed an expert uh, whose name is Lukas Zimmermann, who is uh, responsible, together with Dirk Dirk Becker, who was also my stage designer, uh, for the transformation of the whole system at the Opera Leipzig. Not only for my production, I wouldn't say I was uh, sustainability illiterate, but... um, I have been enrolled through the Oper Leipzig to the Fedora workshops about uh, producing sustainable because even though the interest was always there, I I wasn't that um, prepared, let's say, to come into this production. And this was the first step to talk to people like Lucas and to prepare myself and gain some some knowledge. And what did you find were the key ways you had to rethink your process as a director? Well, definitely the delivering of the project doesn't work like I'm used to. Because if you want to produce some stage design from nothing, uh, you want to produce it completely new, you can use every measuring possible because they are made especially for you. But if you have to reuse basically everything, well, you are limited. And then because you don't know, for instance, we came up with the idea of making the stage design out of tables. But back then, we didn't know how many tables we would have had. And also we started like a call in the city in order to get some tables. But at the moment in which we presented, we delivered the project, it was not 
ready at all. It was just a draft. It was just an idea. Normally, when I present a project, I know exactly what I want and I know in which budget we are going to be. But there were like two budgets, a money budget and a CO2 budget. And what we presented was very rudimentary. And that made me feel very uncomfortable because I'm not used to be rudimentary. Until, I would say, after the first dress rehearsal, we didn't know how the third act would actually look like because we kept on gaining some tables from uh, the citizens in Leipzig. We changed a little bit of design. And so until the end, I had to stay flexible. And this was, yeah, <laughs> a great challenge for a director like me that I wouldn't say I'm control freak, but I love to know where I'm going. Sebastian Gerz's sustainability epiphany arrived right in the middle of a performance. The Big Bang uh, was in 2019. Uh, I was singing uh, Werther in La Fenice uh, in Venezia. And um, I remember I was singing, of course, in Werther, The Beauty of the Nature. But uh, when I left the city, it was uh, Aqua Arta, I would say, I mean, the uh, high level of the, wa of the water. And I remember in front of the coffee, the boss of the coffee was trying to put the water out from his shop. And um, I was like looking at this guy and thinking I was the full night singing uh, On Nature, Pleine de Grâce, The Beauty. And uh, I came myself by, by plane. And I was like, how we say, I, I'm not sure in English, but like a dissonance uh, between that I was doing on stage and what I was doing backstage. And then I started to, to think like, as an artist, I should bring something more than just sing on stage. about how Sebastian put his thoughts into action later. Back to Cologne, I wanted to find out more about Ilaria's directorial process. Did necessity make her the mother of invention? I would love to say, oh, it was all the time fantastic and when you have limitations that you get so creative. About the very beginning of the process, we were a little bit uh, intimidated about, I don't know if you know how big the Opera Leipzig is, the stage itself. Mm -hmm. It's huge. <laughs> I came up in the beginning with some ideas that in order to fill the stage in a way that looked great, it was not sustainable. Also, because I have to say we were the, the pilot production. I'm sure that there is going to be less insecurity after theatres get used to it. But we were the first one, so we weren't really sure where we were going. And it was intimidating. And before we came up with the idea of making a table installation and we were feeling comfortable about that, we tried a lot of stuff out that we had the feeling that that wouldn't uh, come to a satisfying result for us. So no, it was not all the time, oh my God, I feel so creative. I have thousands of ideas that can work with that. No. But after, now that I'm out of it, I feel very strong because uh, I think that, okay, next time in a production, I'm, I'm going to get again in this feeling of, oh my God, I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to trust myself that it's going to going well. I mean, the production was very successful in public and press. And if you asked me when we were doing the first concept, I wouldn't have said that in the end I would feel, would have felt so satisfied. Back to Sebastian's Big Bang moment. What happened next? I was, I mean, flying all over the, all over the world, and maybe when I I develop my career now, I should do a little bit less. Uh, I mean, 
around the world to give the new generation the opportunity to start a bit bigger in this way because it's always difficult to manage an audition when they ask you to do an audition uh, everywhere. So the, the, my feeling was to, to think about that, how to keep creating opportunities to do not to be close to the world and um, also how to be in the goal of the COP21, I mean, the agreement of Paris for 2050. And um, so I started to 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 diet all the, the this thing about carbon footprint in the opera world, including myself. And uh, yes, for for an artist, the biggest challenge of the carbon footprint is the plane. So I decided to act stronger, and uh, I started with an experimentation, and uh, that was quite quite difficult. As European, we are around. 10 ton uh, of carbon by each year for for each people. But as artists, I was able sometimes to fly in 40, 50 hours by flight. And this is the, the thing the most important is to, to do it, um, uh, how to say, les bons ordres de grandeur, it's to say a way like, uh, don't lose your time to act on 1% of your carbon footprint, but work on the 80% to be more efficient. And if we want to be in the agreement of Paris uh, of 2050, we have to work on this 80%. So my 80% of carbon footprint was coming from the flight. Meanwhile, back in Leipzig, despite not having the solid knowledge of what the final objects might be on the stage, Ilaria did have a clear focus on the people, the characters inhabiting the stage. I always concentrate on people. So I was never a person that loved uh, strictly decorational stage design. On the other hand, I concentrated even more on that at the Oper Leipzig. And uh, I have to say that the Oper Leipzig also gave to me great singers, actors uh, in order to do that. They got me like the best singer, actor on on the market. And so, yes, it was easy also to concentrate just on the people because she's amazing. But also the, all the other, Nicole Chevalier I'm talking about, also the all the cast was amazing. So, yes, I concentrated more on the singers. It's something that I love to do in general. And in this case, it worked even better because of the cast. And I'm thinking in the area of costume, wigs and makeup, where I guess that's probably where all of our minds go when we think about making opera more sustainable. These feel often so individualised towards a specific production. How did you feel about needing to make compromises in this area, if you feel you did have to make compromises, that mm -hmm. is? Well, I always feel more dependent on costume design than on stage design because the figures, they manage maybe to come into their souls, but the first impact is visual. And um, I, I felt that uh, there were some compromises to be done, for instance, with the big, big chorus. The Opera Leipzig has a huge chorus also, and we we managed to create uh, about uh, um, the costumes of the Scottish folk were completed from the fundus, from the storage. Then the compromises about the solos were easier because it was also impossible uh, to have a completely net zero production. It was like as much as possible. And concerning the solos, uh, for instance, uh, the makeup department came up with the idea of having the wigs out of cotton yarn. And we made some um, compromises with the, with the materials that were used. So this was more about deciding where can we make compromises where not. And with the stage design, we like created a frame that was compared to many, many other productions, extremely sustainable because basically we just used standard machinery of the stage and uh, put some tables on that. And so that was done. And that created to me a frame of more freedom for some solos costumes while the chorus was from the storage. So in the end, I have to say that your question is very intelligent because uh, what concerns the solo's costume was probably the less sustainable part of the production. Back to Sebastian and his frequent flyer conundrum. 
So I started to use the train as much as I can, as I can. But uh, I received an impact on my uh, incomes. For example, when I reduced by 80% my carbon footprint, it was like uh, 20% less of incomes. And when I wanted to be totally no carbon and taking only the train, it means sometimes they ask me for a concert far away that I that I have to take the plane or an audition that I said no because I am doing an experimentation. The, suddenly the, the incomes was around losing like 50%. So the, the point was to decide, okay, if I want to keep this job, uh, I have to maybe reducing my impact of 70% and and losing maybe 20% of my incomes and I love opera so I wanted to try to 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 give an impulse for a new way how to be an artist in the future and in this way I decided to keep going and today right now my uh, yes I have to to confess, I felt my communication about my 100% no carbon at all. Uh, I don't know how to say. I was not able to find uh, enough partnerships with theaters uh, or by train. Uh, in the same time, it's how to do not be close to the world. How open were opera houses to Sebastian's carbon footprint challenge? Yes, sometimes it's hard to explain to a theatre who want to hear me in a specific role that I did several times and there's many videos on YouTube. Or I can say that I can send a MP3, a new one, uh, but it's hard to say, listen, I try to be to do not have a carbon footprint taking a flight, so just travel from all over Europe and to sing five minutes. For me, we have to find something, a new way to change or to to trust to each other. But I understand for theatre is hard. Of course, for a new singer in the business, it could be different. But uh, I think we are now in a time that we have to think a bit different and to mutualize a bit better our, our industry. Tell me... She says, asks me shy. What does a tree want? Only to grow and grow anciently. What can I do? Be more slow. How slow? Our city still burn fossil forests. How slow? And we live fleeting in the ruins. Can you hear them scrape their branches on the roof? Yes. Rotating under the foundation of my house. Is it the smoke from the chimney that draws them? Is it the ash of their friends and their lovers? No! We have to burn, burn more. And you have put together an essay with 30 proposals over 30 pages called Biopera. Tell us a little bit about these proposals. Are they actionable suggestions for artists that we can all take on? Or are they broader and more intended for houses and companies? I wrote it three years ago right now. So some things are a bit different right now. I would say it's like the... Opera footprint globally. It's the energy, the scenography, and the travel from the audience and from the artistic team. Generally, you work on 80%, 90% of your opera footprint, global footprint. Of course, the audience is very important. I would say something very simple that uh, I always think we, we should at least do that very quickly. It's nothing. Just to add on the ticket that we sell to the audience, a kind of biopera score, I would say. Like we, we have now in some countries, we have the Nutri score. Like uh, you, you eat something quite good for the body. It's a bit the same. Like on this ticket, you could write... For example, that on this production, you were recycling, I don't know, half of the scenography of some elements of some costumes. Before 
Of course, we were doing that uh, already, but we were not really communicating about it. But we have to work on that. And um, you could you could do that. You can you could say, oh, this artistic team, for example, uh, or ninety percent of the artistic team, or maybe one hundred percent or half of the artists took the train, so we reduced. I mean, it's just one line. It's nothing. Or if you come, for example. Uh, you are the audience. Thank you, audience, to be here tonight. We try to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, just to let you know, if you came by by car, uh, I would say fossil car, uh, you, you don't really help us. How to say, like, if you came by food or by transport or or by cycling, you, you will reduce by uh, our carbon footprint tonight. This kind of little line or little, I don't know, bio score, I don't know how to call that, but just to, to create the, the impulse for the audience as well, that we try to do something and they have to, to help us as well. I love this idea of bringing the audience on board and also making them feel a sense of environmental responsibility. Ilaria, meanwhile, discovered other ways of bringing down her production's environmental impact. I think that uh, it's the first time that happened to me that the light designer came before the light session, that which were very tight. I mean, we tried really not to waste uh, um, time on that because the energy that is spent on light sessions it's is a lot. And when we met the first time, he really studied through videos my stage direction completely. I mean, I'm always working with very prepared stage designer, but he literally knew where, who, was, when better than me. And that made the light sessions process, uh, yeah, quite quick. We concentrated, for instance, on backlight and side light. We even, I even created a song about that, about how we are just using back and side light mostly. And, and, and I have to say, I love to light, but it costs a lot of energy. And I decided to create a, a light design that was more simple, but also the pictures were more simple. So we didn't have a lot of change in the stage. So the fact that we had just the same picture for the first and the second act, of course, also helped. Then we didn't spend much time on the big, big stage. So we actually cancelled all these big, big, big stage rehearsals because we created the stage in June. And then we had at the rehearsal uh, stage almost an original stage. So when we went, when we went on stage, we were, it was very quick. I think we did it in two two days of stage rehearsal and then not many light sessions and then it was done. So I'm sure that's probably also a relief for everyone in terms of getting more rest time as well. I'm wondering through your process, were there some surprising discoveries on the way where certain aspects were less sustainable than you might imagine or indeed the other way around where something is actually much more sustainable than you might have thought? Well, I think that before I did this pro- this production, I had the automatism that uh, something that cost more also, it is um, uh, less sustainable, that if you do it cheap, then it is uh, more sustainable. It's like the automatism that the budget of money works exactly like the budget of CO2 and the budget of time. And these three budgets are working completely differently. And for instance, if you have... Um, last minute wishes um and the the easiest way to do that is to um, is to order somewhere this is not sustainable so we couldn't do it and uh, on the other hand the most sustainable way is really to look for the object at best for instance in some second hand shops which on the other hand is less money but uh, it takes a lot of time so these three budgets uh, time money and co2 are working differently and you have to have like free brains uh, to to take care of all of three of them so of course last minute wishes are the worst normally in other production I was maybe more able to have them and in this case for instance for the first uh, um uh, costume rehearsal we didn't have some uh, torches 
uh, I we were supposed to have because they weren't there on time. And normally it would be like a, a big disaster that uh, for the first uh, costume rehearsal, not everything is original because of the pictures. It was not a disaster at all. I learned to be more um, relaxed about those facts. So time is sustainable. I mean, if you'd have the time to find for stuff, you are going to make more sustainable choices. And if you don't have time anymore and you have last minute wishes, then it's your fault. This is what I've learned. <laughs> Sebastian has some long-term thoughts on the future of opera. My biggest concern is also that tomorrow, uh, uh, for example, in a, in a theatre, if there is 10 production each season, uh, in five years it will be only five, and in 10 years only three, and where we are going. So it's to use also this ecological uh, change to, to develop a new, a new way of programmation. This new way of programming is... I call this by collection, but it's more how to, especially for country, I mean, in Germany, for example, you have the, the ensemble, but in France, we don't have. So it's how to create small residence to, to create more uh, show, more production altogether with the same artistic team. This kind of idea that they develop, of course, the same scenography for maybe two titles or for a ballet and an opera, it's not something really new. It's just something that we have to develop, actually. Uh, two things very important to conclude. For example, to be very careful, specifically for the for the theatre right now, when you do a donish, an audition or a contest for uh, a violin in the orchestra, it's always tricky because you can... Everybody has, are coming from all over the world and suddenly you kill all your improvement that you did to reduce your carbon footprint. So we are we have to to think really globally it's not easy i don't have the, the perfect solution but i think it's important also to speak with the artist and now it's important as well to do not promote every time artists who are doing two contracts uh, in the same time and taking a flight every performance. For example, I think we should stop to promote this kind of... I mean, in 2024, to feel um, uh, an artist take, taking a, a selfie from a flight because, hey, I am I was singing a ballo, I don't know, and tomorrow I will sing a, a traviata there. I, I don't know. I would be very careful with this new generation who is coming, like I call them the generation of Greta Thunberg, who are very sensitive right now about the future and uh, to show that we are doing our part and not only on stage. The challenge for the opera industry is to remain a fully international art form, presenting the very best talent from across the world, but to manage this in a more environmentally sustainable way. How did Ilaria manage that tension in Mary, Queen of Scots? In the beginning, I had the idea of having a courtroom and a process to Maria Stuart, an anachronistic process that from the moment she was dead until nowadays. And I thought it was a great idea and I wanted to have costumes of all the of the ages, so people like condemning her of being on her side from the time where she was alive until nowadays. It was a very, very aufwendig, we say in Germany, a too big idea. And we got scared and then we threw that away. And then we came to the next and then we were like unsecure and then we threw that away and this was exhausting. <laughs> Now I think I would try to make those ideas sustainable instead of getting scared, even though in the end I loved also the result that came out now. But if if it hasn't been sustainable, maybe we would have sticked to the first idea, who knows? And I wonder, what would you say, what was the most uplifting thing about the whole process? I think what really surprised me and made me at the same time very happy and very proud uh, was to see how the actors and especially the chorus um, used the stage design because the stage design itself didn't have a big decoration value. It was made to be used. And so to see how uh, the chorus, for instance, bloomed inside it. So it was a, a table installation that was made, that made sense just if people would climb on that, jump on it, um, hide in the little uh, in the little corners uh, underneath a table and then also the 
climbing part, I have to say, people like told me after that, oh, we are, our muscles are in pain. But they were so engaged, uh, all my actors uh, and the chorus especially, I, I, I was so proud of them. And that was so much fun and was, yeah, an uplifting moment, definitely. Meanwhile, a really positive example for Sebastian was his recent time with a British company. Now, I know that last year you were working with the wonderful Opera North on their first fully sustainable season of three new productions in 2023. You were singing Ruggiero in La Rondine, created under the guidance of the Theatre Green Book, that is a UK uh, publication. What was this like in reality? Could you notice the difference between this production and, let's say, a more regular production where sustainability might not be factored in? Well, first, first of all, uh, Opera Nos um, has been doing incredible work for a few years now, um, and um, I think they were ready to t- try to do this program uh, through the the Theatre of Green Book. And uh, I could, I mean, I could feel that the the teams uh, were incredibly invested. We received many emails in this way to uh, be careful of this, do not use this. And you you can feel now it's in the DNA of the Opera House. Every time when I go in a theater, I look backstage, how they walk, how they the schedule, if they have a program, a green program. Uh, because, for example, with me, they were okay. Uh, me, I'm okay to come to, to travel by France and then to England, but not taking a low cost would be very cheap for them. But to take uh, the train and taking, the, of course, uh, a Eurostar and uh, et cetera. But they were... Okay with that, trying to be green as much as we can. But uh, I saw also backstage that um, it was not easy. Uh, I remember the costume department. Uh, it was not simple to use uh, specific um, tissues, uh, to do upcycling, uh, also to organize the schedule because they did a scenography we were able to be used for three operas, which is important for me that we can... We can mutualize a scenography, we can mutualize artists for different shows, we can mutualize a scenography for two different art, ballet and opera, I don't know. It's for me, uh, it was interesting to see the, the tour de force, I don't know how to say the, the, the challenge, how they organized the schedule. Because at one point, all the three operas wanted to rehearse in this, quite in the same time on the same scenography. So it was an incredible puzzle. But they did it. And also they reduced the trucks to transport the scenography in the different city, be, cities. Because Opera Nos, after doing uh, performing in Leeds, but then they go to Manchester, to Newcastle, to Nottingham. It was an incredible challenge for them. but And for me, it was very important because three years ago, when I wrote the Biopera with this idea of collection, a lot of people was trying to do It's impossible, it's the emperor in the opera world. But they proved that it was possible. finish, I asked both my guests for their final thoughts on making opera a more sustainable industry overall. Starting with Ilaria. So I think that definitely there should be a special department. Like there is the prop department, there is this department, the costume department and so on. There should be a sustainability department. So I'm, I was happy that Lucas Zimmerman, this expert, was there because, I, as I said, I wasn't completely illiterate. But if I didn't have the frame, 
I would have tried to cheat more. I realized that I don't put my climate activism or political idea over my artistical uh, goals. But when you are inside it, an artist remains an artist. And I mean, if there are some artists that want to make out of their activity, uh, sustainable activity, their trademark, I don't judge men. I just tell you honestly that while I was into them, art was still at the first place for me. It was the most important thing to do a good stage direction. So it was good that the house, the opera house, had given to me the frame, the expert, a stage designer that did also transformation, transformation manager, that it wasn't coming from me because I thought otherwise I think I would have failed. And I think that we shouldn't too much romanticize the process. I think sustainability is hard work. I think that an artist likes it more to talk about it, but when it is inside it, it's not easy always to get through it. So it should be something that we do all together and that every opera house needs to have experts and actually a department just created to support artists because till the last minute an artist remain an artist. At least this is my experience and this is a danger that I didn't expect when I when I took this production. It was all oh, cool so we're going to make it sustainable. You want to be sustainable but you need the support of the people. First to to connect with people who want who wants to do it from the beginning because even if we try later uh, or to add a green way later it's it's already too late so it's to connect with people who feel that in the dna who will start to build to think about it with this idea of uh, agreement of paris like trying to reduce as much as we can the th The second thing would be try to promote artists with new ethics. I don't speaking uh, about me. It's not. It's just all this new generation of artists who are coming. Sometimes we want to to do that, but they are afraid that maybe some theaters will not like or will be angry or what. I mean, yes, trying to to have a new approach of in your cast because the because the cast that you choose on the social media are showing something from your theaters. Now we know more or less that one people from the audience for one show will be between 20, 30 kilo of carbon. Sometimes even some festival are bigger. We know that if we want to be very green, we have to do under 10. I would say be transparent about your action, about your carbon footprint. If you do one, it's just like, okay, as I said, me too. I was traveling before. It's just, okay, we are here today, but we are going to, to have an action plan to, to be in the right order of magnitude for the future, to not falling into the greenwashing or to not being transparent who could be the worst, I think, for the next generation. Because we, I'm sure we we could pay uh, with a big boomerang, boomerang effect uh, in our audience if we are falling in the greenwashing. So I love to say the, uh, that Mozart was able to create masterpieces in a world of without carbon. So why not us? Thank you so much to Ilaria Lanzino and Sebastian Guez for joining me today for this episode. And thanks to you for listening. There's plenty more online at opravision.eu where you can see artefacts assembly from young artists at the Palau de les Arts, an assembly of modern art and musical compositions, and from Oper Frankfurt, a documentary about the audition training of the scholarship holders of the Paul Hindemith Orchestra Academy. I'll link to those in the show notes and give details on the other music extracts you heard in this episode. This series is edited and produced by Karen Piri and curated and hosted by me, Nina Brazier. Our provision is co-funded by the European Commission. <laughs>